In this video, we're shining the spotlight on the greatest attacking player in chess history, Paul Morphy, as we take a look at 8 electrifying games in the Italian game, each of which end with incredible checkmates. The first opponent is an amateur, and Morphy starts e4. Black's e5 is met by knight f3 attacking the pawn, so knight c6 is played defending. Then Morphy plays bishop c4 marking the Italian game. With this opening choice, white controls the center, attacks the vulnerable f7 square, and prepares to castle. In response, black develops his knight, attacking white's pawn, and white ignores this, lunging in the center with d4, offering another pawn in an attempt to open the center and build up a rapid attack. Black takes the free pawn and white castles, bringing his rook one step closer to the action. After black greedily grabs the second pawn with his knight, white plays rook e1, pinning it to the king. So black plays d5 defending while attacking the bishop. Morphy spotting a clever tactic takes the pawn with his bishop. Now black could defend his knight with f5, but he's better off taking the bishop, which he does. White's idea comes to light with knight c3 attacking both the queen and the pinned knight while exploiting the pin on the d-pawn to the queen. Black swings his queen over to h5 before white gobbles the knight, winning back the piece despite still being down a pawn. After black develops his bishop to e6, blocking the file from any potential discovered checks by the white rook, white leaps his knight to g5, piling up on the now pinned bishop. Then black develops his bishop to b4, attacking the rook. Now white can still take the bishop, because were black to then capture the rook, white would take on g7, which would fork the king and the queen. Instead, in true Morphe fashion, white sacrifices the exchange on e6. Black takes it, and white grabs the pawn as his knight draws near the enemy king. Knight takes c7 with a fork, is the threat. So black drops his queen to f7 defending while attacking the knight, but this entices white to jump his other knight to g5 defending while attacking the enemy queen. She sidesteps to e7 and white lifts his queen to e2 on the same line as black's most valuable pieces. Now white could take on c7 next, exploiting the pin on the queen to the king. So black returns his bishop to d6 guarding the pawn. Morphy follows by taking the other pawn on g7 with check, using the queen's pin. In wanting to avoid more knight checks, the black king jumps up to d7, but this allows the queen to give check on g4 instead. The king's only option is d8, after which white plants the seeds of his final combination with knight f7 check, sacrificing his knight. Black's king has no safe squares, so he's forced to accept the piece. The white bishop takes the vacated square on g5 to give check, and the piece that blocks doesn't matter too much, but black chooses the bishop. White jumps his knight to e6, hitting the king, and while he should move to e8, giving up the pawn on c7 along with a fork on the king, which would give up the rook in the corner, black decides to instead sidestep his king to c8 in a desperate bid to hold on to all of his material. Morphy's eyes light up as he's able to deliver his master stroke, beginning with knight c5, a discovered check. The king cannot go to d8 because of the checkmate in 1 on d7, so he goes to b8. Now the elegant ending to this game is just around the corner. Can you find white's checkmate in 4? The black king is running out of squares, and all white has to do is lock him up completely. The move Morphy plays to seal the deal is knight d7 check. The king is forced to c8, after which knight b6 is a double check, pushing the king back to b8. Then the remarkable queen c8 check, giving up a full queen that black must take with the rook, entombing his king a move before his journey concludes, with knight d7 checkmate. The next opponent is unknown, and Morphy's playing at rook odds because he's just that guy, but it's still an Italian game, and black replies with bishop c5. Morphy pushes his b-pawn, a sacrifice which black accepts, and white does it in order to lure the bishop away from the center, where it becomes a target for the c-pawn after c3. 
The bishop returns to a5, after which white lunges in the center with d4, trying to open the position. Black captures it, and with the pin on his c-pawn to the king, white cannot recapture and instead castles, bringing his rook into the game. Black develops his knight to f6, scrambling to castle as well, but white puts a stop to that with bishop a3 cutting the king's path. Then black drops his bishop to b6 on what would appear to be a more active diagonal. Morphy carries on in aggressive fashion with queen b3, creating a battery aimed at the soft f7 point. Now black's best way to defend the pawn would be rook f8, but he goes for d5 instead, allowing white to open the e-file by capturing it with his pawn. Black's idea was to swing his knight to a5 next, forking the bishop and queen. White shifts his rook over to e1 with check, and black is just running out of defensive resources. His king's only safe square would be d7, but that move would run into knight e5, pushing him right back to e8, after which queen b5 check would be devastating. Black would have to block with c6, and white would take the pawn, opening the bishop's attack on opening this bishop's attack on f7, where it could capture the pawn with checkmate. Even if that were defended by, say, taking the bishop, white has all sorts of other threats, like c7, to win a bunch of material. Back to the game. So black blocks the check with his bishop. Morphy's incredible tactical vision never disappoints, as he takes the bishop, leaving his queen on offer, and black accepts it, failing to see the spectacular winning combination that comes next. Can you find white's checkmate in 6? No queen, no problem, because all of white's minor pieces are in perfect harmony. The move Morphe plays to complete his masterpiece is pawn takes f7 with a double check. Black's only move is king d7, after which white swoops the bishop onto e6 with another check, forcing the king to c6. Knight e5 pushes the king forward to b5, then bishop c4 lures the king to the side of the board, where it's checked once more by the bishop who goes to b4. King a4 is his highness's final move, as white finishes the game off with pawn takes b3, a marvelous checkmate. The third opponent is another amateur, and he meets the Italian game with knight f6. Morphy continues with his tried and true d4, and black takes the pawn, opening the center. Last time white castled, but this time he jumps his knight to g5, coordinating with the bishop on f7. Black blocks with d5, and after white takes the pawn, black recaptures with the knight, placing his pieces in a fragile formation. White castles as his rook itches to take the open e5. After black plays bishop e7, preparing to castle, while attacking the knight, white shatters black's dreams with knight takes f7. Now black doesn't want to lose a whole bunch of material, so he has no choice but to take the knight. Morphy continues with queen f3 check, forking the king and the knight, and at this point black would do best by retreating his king and giving back the knight. Instead, he advances his king into the wild, hanging on to the knight for dear life. If you thought this sacrifice is ended there, then you're in for a treat, as white plays knight c3, adding another attacker to the knight, but giving his own knight up as black takes it with his pawn, completely opening the center. White follows with rook e1 check, and the king, going to the d-file, would just hang the knight. So black blocks with knight e5. White piles up on the pinned piece with bishop f4, and black continues to defend desperately with bishop f6. Then Morphy sets in motion his winning combination, capturing the knight with his bishop. Black recaptures, and white sacrifices the exchange as he lures the enemy king into the dead center of the board. White follows with rook e1 check, and the king cannot go to d6 because of queen takes d5 checkmate. Blocking with the knight would also be no good because white would take it, pushing the king to d4, after which queen f4 check would push the king to c5, and another queen check on e5 would make the king take the bishop, after which rook e4 check would force the enemy queen to block, before rook takes d4 would be checkmate. Back to the game. So black miserably marches his king to d4 instead. 
White takes the knight on e5, and black cannot take the bishop because of queen takes c3 checkmate. So he swings his rook over to the open e-file, trying to exchange off the last of white's pieces and save his king from the brutal onslaught. But in this position, white has a tremendous way to win the game. Can you find the checkmate in 7? With the king so far out in the open, it's not a surprise that he'll be completely trapped shortly. The move Morphe plays to kick things off is queen d3 check. The king's only safe square is c5, after which white pushes b4, giving another check. Going to d6 would see bishop f3 check mate. Otherwise, going to b6 would result in queen d4 check, pushing the king to a6, followed by queen c4, slowly approaching the king. After king back to b6, white would play queen c5 check, and king a6 would be met by queen a5 checkmate. So, instead of this, black takes the pawn on b4, and after white's queen d4 check, black throws in the towel and resigns the game. The black king has a few options here. Staying on the b-file would be the quickest end with rook b1 pushing the king to the rim followed by queen b4 and queen b5 checkmate. Otherwise, the king could go to either a5 or a3, but the response would be the same. White would take on c3, pushing the king to a4. Then queen b3 check would force the king to a5, after which queen a3 would be followed by king b6, and rook b1 would be checkmate. The fourth opponent is unknown, and Morphe is without a rook once again. Black meets the Italian game with knight f6, and this time white immediately jumps his knight to g5, building up pressure on the frail f7 point. Black's d5 blocks the bishop's attack, and white takes the pawn before black recaptures with the knight. White takes the pawn on f7, sacrificing his knight, which, to avoid loss of material, has to be taken. Then white lifts his queen to f3, forking the king and knight, so black advances his king to e6, defending his piece. White brings his knight out to c3, piling up on the pinned knight, and black drops his other knight to e7, defending. White castles his king, preparing to activate his rook, and black solidifies his knight's post with c6. Morphe thrusts forward with d4 in an attempt to open up the center. Black decides to capture the pawn, which is probably not a good idea, since the white rook quickly shifts over to e1 with check. The king drops to d7 before white captures the knight on d5 with his own knight. Black recaptures and white takes it with his bishop next. Now at this point, black has to realize he's already up a full rook and he can afford to give up some material. White's looking to infiltrate with his queen and black should either activate his own queen to stop that, offering an exchange, or start running his king away. Instead, he takes back the bishop and things begin to fall apart. Morphe snatches the pawn, giving a dangerous check. Black could block with the bishop, but he chooses to sidestep his king to c7. Bishop f4 check is next, and at this point, Black's only hope is to give up the queen, and in return, he would at least have a bishop and rook. Instead, he blocks with the bishop, giving white a wonderful winning combination. Can you find white's checkmate in 3? To find the move, one must notice that the bishop is pinned to the king. Using this idea, the move Morphe plays is queen c5 check. This forces the king to either d7, after which queen takes d6 would be checkmate. Or, as happens in the game, the king goes to b8, away from the defense of the bishop. Then, it doesn't matter which piece takes the bishop, but for added flair, white takes it with his queen. Black is forced to capture, after which the white bishop recaptures, giving checkmate. The fifth opponent is Dominguez, and he meets the Italian game with knight f6. White strikes in the center with d4, and black takes the pawn before white castles his king to safety. Black develops his bishop, reinforcing his pawn while preparing to castle, and white pushes forward with e5, hitting the knight. 
the knight jumps to e4, which may be unwise since it limits its own retreat squares, and white follows with bishop d5, hitting the knight while preventing black's pawn to d5. Black's only way to defend his piece is f5, and white takes it en passant, opening the e-file. Black recaptures, saving his knight, and white pins it to the queen with bishop g5, before black immediately breaks the pin with bishop e7. Morphy grabs the knight with his bishop, and black shouldn't take with the pawn because it would allow white to hop his knight to g5, clearing the way for his queen to jump to h5 with what would be a devastating check. So he takes with the bishop instead, clearing the e-file for the white rook to shift over with check. Now white still has ideas of moving his knight before playing queen h5 check. So black's best move is actually to sidestep his king to f8, but that's a hard move to spot. Black drops his knight to e7 to block instead. White jumps his knight to e5, threatening a fork on f7 while paving the lane for his queen to swoop in. This gives black slim options and he decides to take the knight. White's queen h5 check also threatens a checkmate on f7, so g6 by black is forced, and white captures the bishop next with an attack on the rook in the corner. So black slides it over to its only safe square on f8. Morphy develops his final minor piece with knight d2, preparing to maneuver it forward towards critical squares. Black follows with c6, trying to kick away white's advanced pieces, but this just creates a gaping hole near the king. White's knight immediately leaps forward, itching to exploit the weak square, and with the threat of knight d6 checkmate, black's only choice is to push his pawn, giving his king some air. White takes it, and black's king dodges the check to d7. Still, there is just no hope for black, since white has a marvelous way to win. Can you find the checkmate in 3? The black king has so few squares to move to, and white's knight, bishop, and queen is more than enough to finish him off. The move Morphe plays to end the game is bishop e6 check. Black's king is forced to c7 into the leering eyes of the white queen. White continues with knight takes c8, check, and with the knight defended, black's only move is queen d6. White takes her with his queen, giving checkmate. The sixth opponent is Jules from the river, and he meets the Italian game with bishop c5. White pushes b4, luring the bishop away from the center after it captures, and into the path of the c-pawn as it advances a square with an attack. The bishop drops to c5, retaining its control over the center, and white castles. Black continues d6, opening his queenside bishop, before white strikes in the center with d4. Black takes it, and white recaptures, getting a powerful central pawn duo. The black bishop under attack retreats to b6, and after white develops his knight to c3, black brings his knight out to f6, preparing to castle. Morphy doesn't give his opponent a chance to get his king to safety as he pushes his e-pawn, attacking the knight. White's idea is to meet the capture with bishop a3, taking advantage of the open diagonal to prevent the black king from castling. Instead of capturing the pawn though, black decides to push his pawn, counter-attacking the bishop. White takes the knight, opening the e-file, and after black grabs the bishop, white takes the g-pawn with an attack on the rook. Black sidesteps the rook before white shifts his rook to the e-file with check. Black could move his king to d7, but after d5, kicking the knight to e7 and queen a4 check, black would be in trouble. Black would have to push c6, allowing white to open the d-file, where the rook could swing over with a serious skewer on the king and queen. To avoid all of this, black decides to just block with the bishop. Morphy pushes his pawn, hitting both the knight and the pinned bishop, and black already doesn't have much hope left. He lifts his queen to f6, and white keeps the haymakers coming with bishop g5. This, however, hangs the knight, and black gladly takes it before realizing his queen is nowhere near his king, leaving him helpless to the attack. 
White swipes the bishop, creating a mate threat on d7. Black can't even take the pawn because white would recapture with the rook with a checkmate soon to follow after the white's queen would dash to d7. So black slides the queen over to d3, offering an exchange, and white takes the pawn on f7 with check before black recaptures it with his king. Morphe follows with the spectacular move, rook e7, trying to deflect the knight away from e5, which would allow white to hop his own knight there with a royal fork which would win the queen. Black doesn't take the rook, however, marching his king closer to his demise. White evades the queen exchange, moving his queen to e1 with the threat of queen e6 check, followed by king h5 and g4 checkmate. To stop this, black retreats his queen to d5, and white activates his final piece with tempo as the rook swings over to d1. Black's queen is not spoiled for choice, as she has to keep an eye on the e6 square. So black blocks the attack with his knight. Morphe sets up his final combination with a last sacrifice of rook takes d4. After the bishop recaptures, white has a move to win the game in short order. Can you find the checkmate in 6? With the knight no longer around, black cannot safely block checks along this diagonal. So the move Morphe plays to win the game is queen b1, check. And black realizing that it's all over, resigns the game. To delay things as much as possible, black would block with the queen and white would jump his knight to h4 with a royal fork. The king going to h5 would leave the queen free to capture, and g4 would soon follow with checkmate. So the better choice for black would be taking the bishop. White would snatch the queen next, and black taking the knight would result in rook e4 checkmate. So the king would go to h6, after which rook e6 check would give black two options. Taking the pawn would lead to rook e7 check, followed by queen takes h7 check, regardless of where the black king would have gone. Otherwise, the bishop could block the check, and to make the quickest checkmate, white would have to play the clever move, queen g4. Then, no matter what black would play next, knight f5 would be checkmate. The penultimate opponent is Paul Morphy's uncle, Ernest Morphy, and he meets the Italian game with bishop c5. White pushes b4, offering a pawn which black accepts. Then he plays c3, hitting the bishop, who retreats to a5. d4 comes next in an attempt to open the center, and black obliges, capturing the pawn before white castles his king, preparing to activate his rook. Black takes a second pawn on c3 with his bishop, and white captures it with his knight. After black recaptures, white develops his bishop to a3, where it cuts off the black king's path to short castling. So black plays d6, blunting the bishop's diagonal, while opening up his own bishop. Morphe follows with queen b3, creating a battery aimed at the fragile f7 square, and black defends it with knight h6, putting him a move away from castling. White takes the pawn on c3, threatening g7, and black decides to lift his queen to f6 to defend while offering a queen exchange. White wants none of that, as he pushes his e-pawn a square, sacrificing a third pawn. Black takes it with his pawn, reopening the white bishop's diagonal, before white shifts his rook over to the semi-open e-file. Since black cannot castle kingside anymore, he develops his bishop to d7, preparing to go the other direction. In anticipation, white shifts his rook from a to b1, bearing down on the black queenside. After white castles long, white swoops his bishop to a6, hoping for a capture that would open the b-file so that he can create a battery along it with his queen and rook. Now black could survive the ensuing attack with precise play, but things would become chaotic. Instead, black declines the sacrifice, jumping his knight to a5 to defend his pawn that's under attack twice. Were white to capture the knight, then black could capture the bishop with his queen, avoiding the big attack. But white doesn't take the piece. 
instead sliding his other rook over to the c-file with a checkmate threat on c7. The problem for black now is however he blocks the threat, white would be able to take the knight next. Even blocking with the queen wouldn't be good because white would take the knight and the queen can't even move because she still has to defend the c7 square. So black chooses to block with the bishop, which is the best choice, albeit there aren't really any good choices. Morphe captures the knight, and black trying to keep things in the balance takes the bishop. White grabs the pawn with check, pushing the king to d7. Then he takes the bishop on c6 with his rook, knowing that were black to take it with his queen, the knight takes e5 would be a royal fork. So black saves his queen, moving her to f5. White stunningly sacrifices his rook on c7, since were black to take it, queen b7 would be checkmate. Black's king is forced back to e8. Queen c6 check comes next. Blocking with the rook would lead to rook b8 checkmate. So black miserably blocks with the queen. White swoops his rook to the back rank, adding insult to injury, as black can't take it without hanging his full queen and an ensuing checkmate. So black takes the white queen. At this point, white has an amazing winning combination. Can you find the checkmate in three? The white pieces are swarming the black king and his ill fate will soon come to fruition. The move Morphe plays to end the game is rook e7 check. The king is forced to f8 away from the defense of the rook, which white takes next, giving another check. Black can only block with the queen, after which white takes it with his rook, giving checkmate. The final opponent is James McConnell, and Morphe is playing with knight odds this time. Black meets the Italian game with bishop c5, and white pushes b4, luring the bishop away from the center after it captures. c3 kicks the bishop back to c5, and white castles. After d6 solidifying the center while opening the queenside bishop, white lunges in the center with d4. Black captures, and white recaptures, gaining a powerful central pawn duo that kicks the black bishop back to b6. White continues advancing with d5, hitting the knight, and it jumps to e5, only to be captured by white's knight. Black recaptures, and white places his bishop on the long diagonal with an attack on the pawn. So black defends it with queen e7. Morphe lifts his queen to b3, preparing at some point to push his d-pawn to unleash his queen and bishop's full potential. Black develops his knight to f6, hitting e4 and white lets the pawn go, shifting his king to the corner out of the bishop's line of sight. He plans to push his f-pawn to open the center, and he also doesn't mind letting black take the e-pawn since it would give him a semi-open e-file to work with. Black jumps his knight to g4 instead, coordinating with his bishop on the f2-pawn, while also hinting at queen h4, which would threaten checkmate. White deals with both of these ideas with queen g3, defending both squares while also pressuring the e5 pawn. Then black moves his queen to c5, hitting the bishop and adding a third attacker onto f2, and it seems like white could be in some trouble. Morphe saves his bishop, letting his f2 pawn go, and black captures it with his knight, giving check. White takes it with his rook, and black recaptures with the queen. The e-pawn, however, is left up for grabs, and white snatches that with check. Now given black is already up so much material, his best choice would be to block with the bishop, allowing it to be captured before castling queenside. Instead, black slides his king over to d8, and white takes the pawn on g7, threatening the rook in the corner. Black saves it, moving it to e8, and white swoops his bishop onto f6 with another check. Black lifts his king to d7 before white takes the pawn on f7 with his queen, pushing the king to e6. Now the rook is hanging, but capturing it would leave the bishop free to take. So white plays e5 check, check while defending his bishop, and black finally decides to give back some material, capturing the pawn with his rook but this gives white a fantastic way to win the game.
can you find the checkmate in two? The white queen alongside two bishops is a dangerous combination, leaving the black king helpless. The move Morphe plays to finish the game off is queen f8 check, and black seeing no way out resigns the game. Black only has two options. Blocking the check with his rook would allow it to be captured with checkmate. Otherwise, moving the king to d7 would lead to queen d8 checkmate. I hope these games were both entertaining and instructive. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more chess content.